last message we, excuse me, sorry, keep dropping pens. Last message we, we concluded our, our series on salvation through Christ alone, uh, which is um, in the Reformation solas, is known as solas Christus. So today, we're going to move on to the third of the five Reformation solas, namely sola gratia, or grace alone. We are going to be looking at the doctrine of salvation through grace alone and how exactly we are saved, not of ourselves, but solely by the grace of God. But this even goes beyond our salvation. In fact, the doctrine of grace alone can be applied to all of Christian life. None of us would be who we are today if it were not for the continual grace of God. Amen? What we're going to see through this, this next message series is that our entire walk with Christ, our regeneration, our justification, and our sanctification are always and only because of the grace of God. So in this series, we're going to be looking at salvation through grace alone and Christian life through grace alone. For today, I I want to look at the doctrine of of grace alone in our regeneration. But first of all, what is regeneration? What do we mean when we say we are regenerated? Regeneration, in our case, is being brought back to life from the dead. We are being brought back to life from the dead. Now, this is not talking about, again, a physical death, but a particular form of spiritual death. There is more to spiritual death than we will hit on in this message on regeneration that we'll look more at in the next one on justification. But for Right now, for this message on regeneration, we will describe spiritual death as a death we are all born into, wherein we are continually bent against God, unable to please Him or seek Him, in which every part of us is marred by sin, therefore making everything we do unrighteous. Before we are regenerated, we are unable to please God. We are and by our own free will continually bent against God and relentlessly resist Him and incapable of receiving Him. This is the spiritual death we are talking about. A death of our own spiritual nature that that causes us to be against God. And where everything about us is sinful. Not as sinful as we can get, but that every part of us is marred by sin. Sin, and therefore makes everything we do sinful. 
and by our nature, we have no heart to love God. And this is the kind of death we talk about when we say we are regenerated from death to life. We are brought from a state where we are by nature against God. We are by nature and, and by our own free will, we do not love or accept our creator. We are brought from that death to a state where we have a new heart that loves God and lives for him out of our own heart, will, and joy. This is what we're talking about when we talk about regeneration. And we're going to look at regeneration through grace alone. Our main passage for today will be in Ephesians chapter 2. So if you please open with me to Ephesians chapter 2. We will be reading verses 1 through 5. We read, And you were dead in the, tras- uh, in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked. Stop right there real quick. I have had many people say to me, no one is actually spiritually dead. We are just spiritually sick, they say, or we are just going to die, but we're not actually spiritually dead. Now, let's reread the first four words of chapter two. And you were dead. I don't know what your translation reads. If you say that you're sick or sleeping, but my Bible says that you were dead. Scripture in the, explicitly says that you were dead. It doesn't matter if you want to believe that people are just sick or sleeping, or if you don't like using such strong language that might seem offensive to people, or to describe humans as actually that bad. But the Bible says, before you were regenerated, we are dead. The Bible says our state is that bad because it is actually that bad. And the most loving thing that we as Christians can do is teach it, that teach that our state is that bad so that we can know what we need and how much we need God. We are spiritually dead. And what does it mean to be spiritually dead? Let's continue our passage. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of dis- disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and we were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. Let's, let's stop right there. See what is going on here. Verse 1 tells us that we are dead in our sin. 
and verses 2 through 3 explain upon that, expound upon it. We read that the spiritually dead are following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, that is Satan. They live in the passions of the flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, by nature children of what God hates, opposed to our Creator. Everything we see in this passage, everything that the unregenerate follow, all their guiding desires and actions is evil. They follow the world. They follow Satan. They follow their fleshly desires of both body and mind. Their will is to satisfy, to satisfy the flesh, the evil desires of body and mind. They follow the course of the world with Satan as their head. And as the end of verse 3 says, this is like the rest of mankind. Meaning, and it's important to not forget, this means that the unregenerate are currently in this situation. Before we are regenerated, we are bent towards evil. In fact, every desire of ours is only evil continually, as we see from Genesis 6. Romans 3 says, that none is righteous, no, one, no, no, not one. No one does good, and none of us seek God. By our own free will, we do not come to God, but relentlessly resist him. This is what it means to be dead according to Ephesians 2. We are against God, and we cannot come to him. We cannot seek him, love him, or obey him in our regenerate, unregenerate state. The question then arises, how can anyone be saved? If we do not seek God, if we are constantly resisting Him, how can we put our faith in God, particularly Christ, as our Savior for our salvation? The answer is we can't in ourselves. In our unregenerate state, we cannot. We are so sinful by our own nature. Not only do we need Christ to, save, to be saved, but we can't even put our faith in Christ to be saved. This is how hopeless we are. This is how sinful we are. That even when God gives us a means to be right with him, we do not accept it. We are dead, and the dead cannot do anything to bring themselves to life. So now what? Let's continue our passage, starting in verse 4. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In verses one through three in our passage, we have come to the climax of our depravity, the epitome of of hopelessness. We have seen that there is no way in ourselves 
that we can be saved. The unregenerate heart is constantly opposed to God and by nature deserving of nothing other than his wrath. In ourselves, we cannot come to God for salvation. We are against our own hope and Savior. And yet then we come to, to verse 4, which starts with, but God. But God. This is in contrast to our hopelessness. This is the solution to our problem. And that solution starts with God and not with us. We read, but God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. We were dead in our sin, unable to be made alive by ourselves, unable to come to Christ. Yet God, loving us, though we were by nature children of wrath, deserving of nothing but his just condemnation in hell, did for us what we could not do. He breathed into us a new spiritual life and raised us from this death. So the question we ask, how can one with a heart that is so hardened, that is unable to love God or seek him, be saved? The answer is, they can be saved because God takes that heart of stone and gives us a heart of flesh that cannot help but freely and joyfully love and seek God. Ezekiel 36, 26 through 27. God himself brings us to life and removes our hostility towards him so that we can embrace Christ as our Savior. Now, I really want to emphasize the last line of verse 5. This entire section on regeneration comes back to this. By grace, you have been saved. By grace, you have been saved. This is completely by grace alone that we are regenerated. We are dead and therefore incapable of bringing ourselves to life. We are utterly against God. We are so hostile that even if we could merit our own salvation, which we can't, but even if we could, we would not have the will to do it. But God, but God, being rich and in mercy, by his grace and his grace alone, we are made alive so that we can love and obey him and receive Christ as our Savior. Not only did God's grace give us a Savior, not only did he, by his grace, give us a means to come to him, but also by his grace, he made it capable for us to trust in that Savior. And therefore, God gets all the glory for all our, our salvation. We get no part in boasting for our faith. It is by grace 
and grace alone by God's love in which he loved us. This is regeneration, that we are taken from spiritual death and hostility and brought to spiritual life and obedience. And this is by grace alone and not something that we are able to do nor something that we deserve, but only by God's free and loving grace. My prayer is that from this message, you would leave today worshiping God all the more, seeing just how great the grace of God is towards us and what he has done for you that you could not do for yourself. Seeing the depth of your depravity and need. Glory in the height of God's grace.